Gorehal continues to be a problem for Twitch Esports as we have Diamond Skin up 2 to 0. Robodoba is destroying on the orc, and we'll see if he can get it in game number 3. I doubt it. Yeah? I would be a bit surprised. At least, I, if they allow him to get Garrosh again, I really would like Twitch to at least go for a different approach. Because mm -hmm. the blow-up compositions that they're trying to draft are not really working out for them. They're getting shut down by the supports, and also there are sometimes at least in game number one, a lack of communication that doesn't allow them to push the damage onto the target that they choose. So they need to change something. They're down 0-2, and uh, this could be a 3-0 series in favor of Diamond Skin if they're not careful. I mean, other options, they can go to maybe a bit of a tighter map, maybe pull out a little bit more mage play for them to try and be annoying towards that Garrosh, or of course you can use one of those ban buttons. Uh, I wonder, is it worth it to first ban him, though, for them, do you think? Garrosh? Yeah. I think you could also pick him. Yeah. I don't really see a reason why you couldn't pick Garrosh here. They went into Tyrell as the main tank now twice. That's not necessarily a bad approach, but sure. it has fallen off for other teams a bit. Priorities uh, since the Western Clash have changed for most teams. Tyrell still offers a lot to those compositions, but it just hasn't really worked out for them properly. So they could ban Garrosh if they really feel the need, but I could also see them just simply picking the hero for themselves. Well, let's go to game number three and see where that Garrosh will land between these two teams. The battleground picked up will be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Diamond skin with the choice, which means Trick Esports will continue to elect to have first pick. So, Tomb coming in. Already a bit of a change here in terms of map, as you said. A little more tight for them, more about that wave clear. And we'll see if they get that wave clear. A hero that could come out for them. I know we talked about you. Gul'dan. Gul'dan. Exactly. Best Gul'dan in the world. Gul'dan, great on this battleground. Usually one of the pickups that you're going to see pretty often. Also, a Chromie could come in the mix. But that Junkrat could also still be a high priority for both these teams. So far, Dark Muck has been delivering on those Rip Tires. Yeah, he definitely has. And it's not only the Rip Tire, just simply the displacement that he used allowed for a lot of kills. And this placement was the name of the game in a lot of what Diamond Skin did in these matches. Sonia Bandel, Trick D Sport, attempting to avoid her. Maya banned for Diamond Skin, and now some moment of truth. Do we get the Malfurion first pick for Trick, or do they think they can run a Garrosh themselves? Yeah, there's still a few different options, and Medivh is one of them, and that answers the questions that we had earlier. If they are playing Medivh, well, we're going to find out who plays Medivh, but are they playing Medivh, yes or no? That's the big question here. And. Because they haven't played Medivh in the past, but with the rework, a lot of teams have refocused their priorities. Now we have Garrosh and Malfurion as the early picks, and uh, that seems to be a slightly familiar. I don't know, we haven't seen that. Oh yeah, last map. <laughs> if it ain't fixed, don't break it. Okay, Diablo and Gul'dan right away. Oftentimes when Medivh was picked in the second ban rotation, we've seen teams ban out Diablo so that the Leyline Seal into Apocalypse combo cannot be used. Now Trick Esports is circumventing that problem immediately by just simply picking it early. And now with Gul'dan in the mix, we all of a sudden have a Leyline Seal into an Apocalypse, into Echoed Corruption and Runa's Affliction after level 16, if properly stacked. And, and a possible that, Horrify. And a possible Horrify. And that equals, if you set it up properly, a couple of insta-kills. And you don't even need that combo yet, too. In the early game, Diablo can be annoying, putting uh, members against the wall. And then also later on, that 13 and 16. This late game for Trick Esports becomes incredibly terrifying. Yeah, it definitely does. This is d one of those things where Trick is just saying, okay, we're doing something different right now. This is not working. Let's change the MO. And they do that immediately. Medivh alone is already a complete game changer. He really just is the one hero they can flip everything. Stukov banned out. Smart ban from Diamond Skin. He would definitely make the setup that Trick has even worse, so it's definitely a good choice from the team in blue. How is Trick going to run this now? We could see them, for example, with the ban on Hanzo. I was thinking Junkrat, and no, Junkrat. they ban the Junkrat. Take him away here. See what Dark Mock will transition into instead. Mm -hmm. The Hanzo, I could see it being picked up. It's been pretty yep. safe here. It's good on this battleground too. Q builds great as well. You don't have to go in a scatter arrow unless you want to go for those aggressive night camps. We actually saw a bit of a hybrid on the last Hanzo. It mm -hmm. was a auto attack build with the explosive arrow at four. They could play Blaze again. Diamond skin. Mm -hmm. The Garrosh Blaze composition that they played on the last game, the last game uh, worked for them. They had Blaze on the bot lane. So far, we d I don't see a bot laner yet for Trick. Malthiel, of course, is another option. For both teams, Diablo. actually, against Garrosh, against Diablo, so it would, uh, it would work on uh, both sides. I would actually be a little bit worried for on the side of Diamond Skin if Trick plays Garrosh, uh, plays Malthiel, because you have Medivh as well. Mm -hmm. 
who helps get that protection to make sure you can get off the hard engage that you Exactly, want. you can go in with Paul, you can move out with it again, you have the protection on top of no matter what healer they take, that would really help them out. But Diamond Skin, first of all, is going straight into Tracer setup, and Malfeel. yes, they pick Malfiel away, so they also have him to pressure Diablo even more, I like that. I really like this third and fourth pickup. I'm a little worried with Diablo uh, against the Tracer, we see what can happen there, but you have the Malfurion to protect you, you have the Malfiel later on that will uh, be annoying in itself, helpful against the Diablo, so they're starting to run out their draft pretty nicely. I think I would like a little more wave clear with that fifth pickup, but yeah. it looks pretty good. No, I have to agree. I really like it as well. You have the Malfurion Tracer composition, you have Garrosh that can also mm -hmm. work with Malfurion quite nicely, Malfiel then as well. You just need to be careful keeping Malfiel alive. That's the one thing that they... If Malfiel was on the side of Trick Esports, they have more tools to keep him alive, thanks sure. to Medivh. On the side of Diamond Skin, he needs to be a bit more cautious, I believe. But let's see how Trick is going to run this out. Last pick for them, for the solo lane, could be Blaze. I guess they could also go into Leoric here, that would work against Garrosh as well. Make sure that you get the damage reduction a bit later on, get some slows into play. Rack can be good on this map too. Helping with the wave clear, the side laner. Stitches! Ooh, Stitches coming out to play with an Oreo. Okay. Okay. I mean, Stitches was always good on Tomb of the Spider Queen, and you actually... I mean, you definitely can use that. It's not quite what I expected uh, them to use here. Heavy hit point pull for him as well. But I was thinking an Uther would come in after that Stitches to help land the combos. Yeah, Oriel is definitely, as a solo support, really interesting. The combo with Gul'dan, of course, is like the original combo. It's really where you get a lot of energy. Mm. But we rarely get to see an Oriel as a solo support. And luckily, the Medivh's there to help out with that pseudo support shield. So it makes it a little yeah. bit easier for Oriel to function in this comp. Yeah, still. I didn't expect an Oriel. I, I haven't seen Oriel in uh, quite some time. You have, of course, the Detainment Strike too, which can be pretty nice. And you can work also against Tracer to an extent with your ult, but outside of that, I think with everything else that was still available, I would have expected a, an Uther or, or a Rega, but they show something completely different. Has backfired a lot of times at the Eastern Clash, uh, the Aurel picks, but let's see if Trick can pull that off. Lenar comes out to try and stress out Trick D-Sports. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen Lenar in a while, so a lot of poison damage between Malthiel and Lenara and Tracer to help clamp those fights. The good news for the Ariel pick and the Medivh is uh, you have multiple tools, tools to deal with Blast Rites, yep. and also the Pulse Bomb comes out. Uh, so they do have the ability to deal with these uh, aggressive heroics that can land and take out a target, but I'm a little worried here for Trick Esports just because we haven't seen Ariel do so well as you mentioned at the Eastern Clash. Yeah, the Ariel is. Interesting to me. I really want to see how that works out mm -hmm. for them, since it would be awesome if we had another healer that pushes into the top and can say, okay, this is an alternative. And so far, Aurel has ne really, never really crossed my mind as an actual alternative in the pro play, since every time we've seen her pick, it was mostly in double support compositions, and even then she struggled. So with Gul'dan, she has a really nice bank that at least helps, but still, it's a bit of an odd twist to the comp. Whereas Diamond Skin has a lot of damage, a lot of damage over time now as well, with Nara coming in. And definitely a very, very annoying setup that they're currently running there. And we have Garrosh at the front, and that alone already makes me lean a bit towards Diamond Skin because Robodoba just has been so strong there. Yeah, I want to know how they're going to control this Tracer and how she's yeah. able to zip around. Obviously, you have the point and click with Diablo on that charge, but if Tracer positions well, shouldn't be put against the wall. Detainment Strike can be another option. Like, okay, a Pulse Bomb's coming, drop the Detainment Strike and keep her away. Yeah. But it's going to have to be pinpoint control here for Trick Esports. Let's see if this is enough zest for them as we head to game number three. Diamond Skin, look into possible we close out the series, whereas Trick Esports is looking for the first win. And at this point, we have Diamond Skin to the left side of the map. They are in the lead. A 2-0 for them at this point. And we have Darkmark on Lunara, Nanda on Malthale, Robadoba again on Garrosh, Roskmek on Tracer, and Wolfjow on Malfurion. On the right side in the red, Make playing the Medivh, Crosby on Gul'dan, Rimmer on Diablo, Grandpa Kit playing Oriel, and Alex Proji will be your Stitches player. And we get our answer, Make will be our Medivh. Yeah, Make as the Medivh player. And now, of course, the big question, is Diamond Skin able to get a 3-0 victory here? That would be slightly insane. That would be actually crazy. That would also be a really big blow to the to the aspirations and ambitions of Trick Esports because they are the team that said over and over again, we want to go to offline events. This is why we are changing things, why we're trying to become 
better and make sure that we are a bit more try hard than we were in 2017. Didn't really work out for the Western Clash. And if the regular season now starts with an immediate 0 3 against uh, Diamond Skin, that would of course be an absolute disaster for them. And suddenly the conversation after this week becomes MSB to possible Crucible, right? Leftovers mm -hmm. have already gotten a win, Diamond Skin getting a win too, and they're closing that gap between them. The Trick Esports definitely need to make sure that they land a few wins here. Robodoba taking a little bit of poke here underneath the turret, turns around and gets a decent groundbreaker. What I like about this composition, and we can talk about it for the draft, is there is a major threat here in the early game for Tracer, obviously, can go for those pulse bombs and get the kills, but as we head to the mid to late game, Lenara and Malfiel start to take over that late game scariness that Tricked Esports was trying to present with that gold ant. Yeah, and I'm really worried a bit for Tricked. They have a cool setup, don't get me wrong, a good ley line and an apocalypse, that is all they need to make sure that Gul'dan can deliver a huge amount of damage, and he has to be the main damage dealer with that setup they're running. Now Stitches of course can also be super annoying as he goes into a slam build that is going to deliver quite a bit of damage in the later stages of the game, and also the slows that will be very helpful to keep track on Tracer. But they need these setups. And every kind of combo that they've been trying to use in the previous games just didn't really work out. Krampi can kind of show on why he's actually picked this story, y'all. He's helping control this Garrosh. Every time a Groundbreaker comes out, he drops the Detainment Strike. The animation is quicker on the Detainment Strike than the Groundbreaker connecting, so you're actually able to interrupt it. The problem is the Groundbreaker doesn't go on a full cooldown, so you have to make sure that you get away from the area. Yeah, and also we are still in a situation where he needs to make sure that he gets the heal through in the later stage of the game, and that's going to be a bit tri tricky. But again, this can definitely work out. Uh, one of the points, though, is Gul'dan is going to be the main target, and it's going to be a bit rough, I feel. Especially with Darkmog being very aggressive here at the front, not even worry about any kind of like hook or aggression through Diablo. So far, it's a bit tricky for Trick to make these rotations work for them because it's really Diamond Skin that is having the edge over in the four-man rotation. It'll definitely be on the portals here and the control from Maka. And Maka here puts on a good force of will and a portal as well. Robodoba yeah. underneath turret and he actually falls. So Trick Esports gets first kill. Yeah, that was definitely the money flipped out there. Pushed into the towers and then all the damage is pushed onto Garrosh. That was a good first kill. And if they can get more against Wolf Joe, that would be great. And here comes Diablo and that's the deliverance that they need and they kill him. It's a close call, but they make it work. Darkmog wants to go for the counter kill, though, and it looks like he's going to get it. Yep. Down Here's Nande, too. Nande coming in here. Came all the way from the bottom lane. Stitches tried to slow them down. Ooh, Rossmag goes under towers again. All right, Diamond Skin, I don't know if you're aware, but Diablo has this ability where he can body slam you behind him, and if you're near turrets, you're going to get picked off, because that's happened a few times now. And Nande, they actually try to go for Nande, but Maka finds himself immediately in trouble as Nande jumps in. It's a really fun game that we're seeing here because we have kill after kill and just one attempt to engage into another battle after, after the next. So also 13 stacks on the Arcane Rift, 84 on Diablo for his souls. And I want to highlight that we have Wolfjo again with uh, the Vengeful Roots. So it's going into the tree and damage instead of focusing onto the deep roots, which has been in the past one of the priority picks for most support players. Eat your vegetables, so Wolfjo says today. Grandpa Kid in trouble has to come to his teammates on here on the right side. Rossmeg was willing to chase him down, but they open up a little bit of a window here to go for a turn in. And that's also another thing about Diablo getting these kills underneath the turrets. Uh, these gems are so low right now for Diamond Skin. They only have 21 turned in, whereas Street Esports has 49 available. The heavy burden has been picked up on the level 4 now for Grand Paquette, and that comes back to what you've been talking about, the approach to always just shut Garrosh down whenever he tries to go for Warbreaker. And now with heavy burden, you get the additional slow after it's stun. So there's a lot of stun potential with the Tame and Strike on the map. And if you then have the slow as well, it will put Garrosh in a very awkward spot where especially Gul'dan has a super easy time following it up on damage. So it's exactly. a pretty cool idea here from Grand Paquette. And you can already tell that a lot of the focus is going to be on him. He needs to be the one to shut Garrosh in particular down whenever he can. Any other hero, of course, will do the trick as well, but especially that front line. Got to make sure he has a team strike up in case. If Garrosh is able to find a pick on Ariel, that Ariel will fall pretty darn quickly. Grandpa Kit controlling the side here. Robodoba gets a root and tries to escape here. The corruption lands on him and he goes around for a heal, but he's trying to run a Wolf Joe to get the heal, but it's not up in time. Maki takes a pulse bomb, but at the last second gets a heal from Grandpa Kit. Well played by Tricked. Very aggressive around the portals. We asked the question in the earlier drafts. Are they going to play Medivh? And if so, do they have the team coordination that's needed through the portals? And so far, that's definitely the case. I really like it. 
Portals are being dropped. Immediately the team moves through. They go for quick rotations. They go for quick kills. They move into the back lines, onto the solo lanes. So Jick is really impressing me so far with how they play around those portals. And another combo here from Rimmer. Nande attempting to get some damage in before he has to escape. Dark Mock finally hitting his stride too with that level 7 Splintered Spear coming online. I know we haven't talked about Lenara in a while, but being able to split off those spears and hit four targets, always a good tool for a Lenara player. And we also have so much mobility now on the teams. Medivh, of course, enabling the mobility for Trick, but also they have the hook on Alex on Stitches, and that is great for the displacement. Then you have at the same, so on the same note, you have Garrosh who can also flip the targets. So we just see heroes jumping all over the place right now. Makes for a bit of a chaotic game, but it's a very entertaining early game that we see here. Malfi a bit turning on the bottom. Rimmer goes in for a charge of a minion so he can pull a target to the right. A root comes out and Rimmer's getting focused down. He gets tossed to the side. A force of will and a portal will get him out. Rossman goes in for the pulse bomb. Can he get the kill? It explodes. The poison is ticking. Grandpa Kitty, he has a heal. Can he provide it to Rimmer? Rimmer He's looks like he might just survive with the force of will. The poison. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to almost connect there, but enough saves there. Trick Esports able to save Rimmer and his souls. Yeah, that was definitely important for them because he was fully stacked. And if he falls there, it's of course a bit unfortunate. This early in the game, it takes so long until you finally get the souls together. And the death timers themselves are very low. So that would have been a huge blow against the hit point pool of Rimmer Baller. But great save that we just saw. So that was a good one. Diamond Skin setting up for defense here. Ten is right around the corner, but they only need nine gems to get the first turn of the game. They would love to do so, but they also want to make sure that Trick doesn't drop any off. Trick currently has 88 gems available for them, and after this defense, they should have close to two turn-ins as well. Yeah, but Diamond Skin gets the turn-in, and so they should also hit level 10 quite in time. Trick is a little bit ahead, and I don't think it's really going to matter in this case now. They will maybe start the defense off with their heroics, but I don't expect them to get anything done before Diamond Skin gets their own heroic ability. But this is, of course, now where combo time starts. And no Leyline Seal. Instead, we're seeing them straight with a Polybomb. Polybomb's been the go-to as of late on Medivh, it seems like. Yeah, but with Diablo, I still expected them to go for Apocalypse. Uh, for uh, Lane and Seal, of course. But we still have the Gorge. And talking Gorge, there we go. Kidnap combo already used, but Bambi is jumping up. Dark Monkey will jump away thanks to the Leaping Strike. And a good thing he did, too, or this entire push would have been shut down pretty well by Tricky Sports. Yeah. Horrify also used in that engagement. Trick Diamond Skin will take this time with no Horrify to be up to push in the middle lane, and they can look to head towards a different lane after this Web Weaver is cleaned up. Top is uncontested for the moment, while bottom starts to be cleaned up by Stitches. But Malfio. He's looking for a kill. Alex and Proji playing a little bit too safe, realizing that's coming, backs up. Yeah, has to back up here. Aureal also eating a fair amount of damage, but tricked with that isolation attempt. Trying to go for Gorge and then the immediate portal through Medivh. So kidnapping one of the targets and trying to eliminate it as fast as they can. And the portal aggression is still there. They're doing a very good job being aggressive and putting pressure on the diamond skin, but it's still the blue team that walks away with a very significant lead. Great moves here again, but the hook is hitting hard as Dartmok gets isolated and still kept alive. I can't even believe that. with the hook, they are not able to take him down. They even had Aureol there too for the detainment strike to put him against the wall after the Stitch's hook, and it just did not connect. I can't believe Darkmok was able to sidestep and get away from that fight after using his leaping strikes. Not only that, the body blocks alone could have put him into yeah. a place where he just couldn't escape, but that didn't happen. Diamond Skin is playing really well around all that aggression that we see from Trick. Hooks coming out, portals moving in, Diablo just chasing you all over the place. And here's the thing they took two forts down on one turn in. Yeah. Top and bottom has put them up one level. They're about to hit level 13. Trick Esport is setting up for defense now. They have two turn-ins, so don't count Trick Esport out yet, but Diamond Skin got way more than I thought they would. And Malthiel still hasn't taken his level 10 on Diamond Skin's side. If they go into last rights and try to stack that cooldown, that's of course also going to be a big problem for the hit point heavy frontliners for Stitches and for Diablo. Tormented Souls would also work with these engagers, but you have to be a bit careful since you don't have an Uther for Divine Shield available or a second support to help you out here. But this is still scary. It is still scary. Tricky Esports trying to be a little scary themselves, trying to push in the middle lane and also go for a turn in. Robodoba and Dark Monk scout this out and delay, delay, delay. While the rest of Diamond Skin tries to soak, they're wanting to get 13 and possibly force a fight. Alex, of course, is going to look for a hook again and also for Gorge. They are all clustering around Medivh, so a portal would allow them to move away. But this is level 13 now, and we don't quite have the gems yet for Diamond Skin to get another turn in, but they're starting to get a lot closer to it. Good damage output on the side of Crosby. 29 stacks for him on the Echoed Corruption. 
Marke, by the way, has also not completed his quest talent yet, so we're seeing him on uh, 25 stacks. Needs another 14, 15. Ross Meg, about to see Stitches come over to the corner. Gonna go ahead and back up. Rimmer was following afterwards in case Tracer stayed too long. Could have been tossed against the wall. And two heroes are still waiting for that talent to be taken. Could see the unfair advantage on the side of Lunara. We could see her head. Uh, okay. In this case, we are having straight for the additional damage with the Giant Killer. Makes sense against how hit point heavy these tanks are. And here comes the Tormented Souls for Malthiel. Tracer with a quick recall after we saw Diablo go straight for her. But still the mid lane dominated by Diamond Skin as they use their talent advantage to force Strict Esports back. And you can see that Giant Killer going to work. Alex and Proji getting chunked after a couple of auto attacks. Had to back away pretty quickly here. Turning, getting closer and closer for Diamond Skin so they can have their second turn in the game. I mean, Boy, they need, what, eight more? Let me put some numbers on it. We have currently Crosby, the best damage dealer on the side of Trick Esports on 21,000. And Lunara has 31k. So that is insanely impressive. That it is. Even Malfurion now healing here. 33k to 27 on the Aureo. Yeah, Lunara is really doing work, and Darkmog, of course, is towing the line the entire time. He's very far out, very aggressive, but he gets the damage done. Now, with this all being said, Tricky Esports, all they need is one good hook into a polybomb. I love. What's that? I thought all they need is love. That's all, <laughs> all they need is love, yes. Thank you for introducing the song. Kautor listens to music confirmed. He's human after all. Poke comes in, Rimmer takes a little Not bit of damage. Not sure about that. <laughs> 13's here, and Tricked Esports is willing to force a fight now. Diamond Skin doing their best to sit at bay, dance around. They want one more gym here, and they can do a turn in themselves. Yeah, and now they are exactly at that point. They interrupt Rema. Here comes the hook, though. The Gorge, Lunara, she still has polybomb. the opportunity to jump away. Got to do the polybomb right away. Tame yep. strike afterwards. There we go. Trick <laughs> Esports finally reveals what they can do here. Fresh meat. Fresh meat indeed. The blue web weavers also get turned in during that entire phase. Alex with a hook. I got dinner, boys. And then they go straight for the deer. I mean, Citrus is basically a butcher when you think about it. Yeah. Put together by Diablo can actually skin. Diablo can just say cook it. Yeah, that's true. Hang on here. Diamond Skin has 10 more seconds for Lenar to come on in. Can Trick Esports defend this push, though? Did Diamond Skin turn in too early? Well, Diamond Skin, I feel, had to turn in. If not for that, Trick would have used that kill to turn in themselves. But of course, now that turn in is going to be shut down in the mid lane at least pretty quickly. The problem is they can't lose anybody. And that was actually a very clutch move here against the Horrifier. If that connects, it would have been a dead tracer. But the fight is still ongoing. Rova in a bit of trouble. Polybomb comes out. Malthiel is in the fight. Lunara still hopping towards the battle. Nana doing his best here, using that Tormented Souls. Now, meanwhile, this fight continues, but the top lane and the bottom lane are being pushed in. Keep walls are under siege, and Diamond Skin also has an option to take the fort. Yeah, Lunara still bouncing around in the back here, and the entire time just a boink, a boink, going straight into the fight and trying to position herself for a bit more damage output, but the mid lane has already been cleared, and now they're trying to bounce down to the bot lane. They are. 16 is also about to hit, especially with that turret falling. There it is. Diamond Skin has a full level and a quarter over their opponents. And still, Trick Esports are in a situation where they're going to need that turn in soon. 117 gems on their purse. Tricked is getting the kills. They have five kills against one. The problem for them is they are losing the map. But with all the gems they have, at that po moment, when they start to really get some momentum going, aka get a kill, get your turn in, and then get one turn in after another, they can just flip the entire game. Yeah. The big threat is, once the Diamond Skin starts taking kills, there's a very good chance that Trick is starting to lose out on gems, and that once that happens, the comeback potential for them is going to decrease infinitely. It's, it, this is really scary for them. Diamond Skin going for the option of grabbing the boss here, which will push straight into a keep. That keep wall has been cleared up. Trick Esports will go for a turn in, which they should do. This helps mitigate this boss that is being grabbed by Diamond Skin. Yeah, boss is going to be taken quickly enough. Trick doesn't know how long exactly Diamond Skin was already on the boss, so they didn't even try to contest. They also don't have their level 16 talent, so they already knew that even with the abilities that they have here, it, it could have been backfired really hard. Also, it's a high risk, high reward play. If you make it and you win, then you're in a great spot. But if you lose, then it's probably going to be game. And this, since this is already an O2 situation from Trick's perspective, you can't really make that work. But the end result is that Diamond Skin is able to more or less negate the turn in from Trick Esports by taking the boss. So Trick now has to focus on the defense up at the top. Even the Web Weaver is helping out. What a nice Web Weaver. Yeah, this is a really, this is a very considerate Web Weaver. The Same boss. Like pushing the lane, helping you boys. You know what? I feel actually a little bit charitable today. I'm just going in and help you out with that. See, spiders aren't bad at all. They kill insects, they kill bosses, they help push your lanes. 
What nice things. Yeah, they are fantastic. Trick D Sports has one lone web weaver here to push in the top lane, but Diamond Skin, as mentioned, has already cleared up the middle and the bottom, so they look to save all their forts with this push. Trick D Sports will have another turn in after this, but they're still a level behind Diamond Skin, but this is their chance. This is where they have the tools to actually fight. Yeah, so they can now fight, especially Book. since they just completed also the talent. Gorge is in. The portal taken, and Roba going straight for the challenge, trying to stay alive, and he can actually wow. do exactly that. And Dartmoor with a splintered spear is getting insane damage out. I can't believe he just turned that around like it was nothing. He acted like he has been gorged before in a 5v1, and he's like, I got this. It's, no problem. It's Garrosh. That was bonkers. <laughs> yeah, Garrosh has been pretty strong lately with those setups, and this is now the turn attempt. Again, Tricked has just used the turn in to uh, defend against the boss. Uh, at this point, there's just portals everywhere. They're jumping through them with the familiar, trying to get some damage onto Rosbeck, who's just zipping away and should have an easy escape here. They're, of course, trying to catch him, but there's still 47 gems in the hands of Diamond Skins. So they're getting closer to another turn in themselves. Yeah, they'll need a good 12 more, and they'll be fine to do so. Can even drop off some now. Trick Esports scouts around the bottom and Malfiel sees them. Alex even going for the fishing hook, and that's always a strong indicator of what you're trying to do here. The poly bomb, the horrify right afterwards, but there's just not enough to drop Garrosh, and now Tracer is starting to move in. Pulse bomb hits Alex Proji, gets chunked down. Grappa can't not have any healing for now because Goldan's not in a spawn to even get any damage to give her the hope. And Diamond Skin has 54 gems to drop off. They need six more, and they'll have an additional turn in this game. Tricked going into the fishing hook just already tells you that they are at this point worried about the engagement and they try to somehow get these hooks in so that they can get the in initial kill. And they're going for Ospek and that's exactly what they needed. Great move by Rema, slamming Tracer into the wall. The hook follow up, Roba Doba is able to push Alex back though and preventing a second death on their side. But now Tricked got the kill against Tracer and they just got the turn in. So now they find themselves in a position where all of a sudden they can start to build up some momentum in this game. I can't believe Rimmer actually got that pick too. It looked like Tracer just barely blinked out of range, but Diablo yeah. with that long uh, hand and arm was able to grab her and toss her on the floor. Trick Esports looking for another gorge. pick. They get a gorge here, they pull him to the side here, and that is going to be a mouthfeel. He pops his own cleanse, goes for the juke. No polybomb, but the apocalypse comes out, and here's the big fight, and that's a five versus four. Down goes Malthiel, and they are trying to get more kills. Robodoba needs to be careful. The hook is hitting hard, and it hits Wolf Joe. Wolf Joe trying to kite away here. We'll have a root up pretty soon. Robodoba at the same time taking some damage on the top left. Crosby goes for the horrify, but it looks like Tricky Sports is actually a little disconnected on what they want to do. Wolf yeah. Joe is able to sneak out. Oh, just kidding. Ruinous Affliction is kind of good. Wolf Joe is down, and that was important, but you're absolutely right. They are a bit, a bit disconnected still in what they want to do. Two different targets that they attack, and there was definitely a chance that both of them escaped. But now they're staggering deaths, and that's a massive problem for Diamond Skin because that momentum that we talked about, this is there now for a trick, and they're starting to go in. The fort in the mid lane fallen, the fort at the bot lane already destroyed. They have taken the lead in experience. Alex is still sitting at the side, waiting for an opportunity to hook. They take the walls down so that he has a free shot there, and if he connects the hook, then it could be the end of Robadova again. And they are so close on level 20 right now. That they are. These kills, this turn in has gotten them a lot here, breaking down all the forts and the keep wall, even looking for a keep. We're going to have Malfurion up in about 10 seconds. Tracer showing herself to the top, has backed up, and will come back for defense. The keep is down. Think how quickly this turned. We talked how tr about how Tricked had the entire time the advantage in kills. How they found those kills, but they lost the objective. They lost the map. They lost their own infrastructure. And now that they finally started to turn in, they snowballed it completely. Level 20 in their hands, taken a lead. They were behind the level. Now they are ahead, and they have just taken the keep, and they still hold 100 gems, so they can go for another turn in right away. They have another turn in, and a boss is about to spawn too. If they want to make that play, they decided just to go straight for the turn in, just keep the traction going, while Diamond Skin is still at bay at 19 and a three quarters in experience. And this could be game here. Hook comes out, misses as the night camp is grabbed for Diamond. Diamond Skin wants the 20. They're working with it. They're trying to get the Storm Talents. Try to defend with Storm Talents. Have an even fight against your opponent. And they still have that potential to go for these big battles here. But with the level 20 now available, it's going to be very rough for them to make anything happen as the attack is already starting. And this keep in the mid lane, once it falls, they have two lanes pushing against them. And that is devastating on this map. That it is. They start to clear out, looking for that 20. Robodoba steps up, drops a groundbreaker. Look how far back Alex is. Yeah, the web weaver completely chunking down this keep as well. Alex already uses his hook, misses. 
Yeah, they're waiting for the cooldown again, but there's no way of holding this keep, none whatsoever. So now you have the keep falling here in the middle, bot lane is being pressured heavily, and they just simply rotate up to the top. No, they don't, they actually try to go for core. They turn around and they're looking at it here. Garrosh on the top right. Even if they don't go for the core, them fainting like they go for the core gives more time for that web weaver to go to top lane. Yes. And it looks like that was a call for trick as they portal over. Nice. They portal over, so they even save some time there. And now they break through the wall. Easy peasy. 20 is there for Diamond Skin, but this is definitely not what they envisioned, considering how far they had they were. Eight kills against one. Jake Esports just dominating this right now. And don't forget that boss is up and available towards the top here. Diamond Skin looking to see where exactly Trick Esports as They have their turn in a total of 53 out of 65 um, for Tricks. So they don't, but Diamond Skin has that threat. Yeah, and now, of course, Diamond Skin is worried about the boss play on Trick's part. That's why they're already up at the top posturing there and sending Lunara's Wisp in. But Trick isn't really going for it. They know that at this point they are so far ahead that as long as they don't throw, they should be able to, uh, to get this done. But especially with the bot lane pressuring, they can just simply posture up at the top. They only have to posture on the boss area. They never have to engage there. And time is going to work in their favor. Diamond Skin will have to send someone back down to defend against the catapults eventually. Mm -hmm. And then they can try to engage. And they also can just hook every time the cooldown is ready and see if they maybe connect. Ross making a position here with Rimmer showing. He has to be careful of not being Shadow Charged. Getting taken out with them on the bottom side though. They put themselves in a position where Diamond Skin can defend their lanes and also contest the area. Trick realizing this, started to rotate towards the top. Yeah, 22 about to turn in by Rosk Mech. Unless Rama Bola gets close enough, Alex gets the hook. And Rosk Mech cancels. Lenara able to sneak into the top. Getting the turn in, and now we have Webbers coming out for Diamond Skin, buying themselves some time and an opportunity to try and force a fight. This should only create some space for Diamond Skin. This shouldn't be too worrisome for Trick, because the bot lane and the mid lane are going to be cleaned out by the catapults pretty quickly. Mm. So those shouldn't be able to put too much pressure onto the keeps on Trick Esports. The top lane is what worries them probably the most, so I would expect their efforts to focus on that first. And once they have that defended, they can start moving into the mid lane. Now still in a level 20 for Malfield, thinking about whether or not he needs that buyback. Trick Esports positioning themselves in that top lane, realizing that is the biggest threat, as you pointed out, Kaldor. The bot lane, on the other hand, is already starting to push against them even more. The catapults are already doing their work here, and that's very good damage that we're seeing from Gul'dan. So Diamond Skin is even on a bit of a timer here. The keep has already taken some damage early on, but as long as Trick plays this smart, and right, and they get the hook and they get the gorge, and they're actually immediately carrying the target straight into the keep itself. Roba Doba is there. The attempt to go for Gul'dan from Tracer as she's trying to get the backline kill, but here comes the apocalypse and the stun against the keep. Down goes Malthiel. The Horrify came out, and and now Diamond Skin is on the run completely. Another hook connecting, and this time even Garrosh cannot survive. Even Garrosh cannot survive, but Malfield did come back. He bought back, but Rossmeg gets caught by Rimmer, and he is taken out. Only three left here for Diamond Skin. Lenar, Malfield, and Malfurion. And with the Web Weavers being cleaned up, Tricked Esport looks to go for a turn in and try to turn it in the game. They could go for Boss here as well. They need to definitely decide the game right now. The top keep just has fallen, so this is something that Diamond Skin at least accomplished. So. Trick wants to make sure that they are ending with this. They try to do it through the turn-in. They're not going for the boss. Instead, the turn-in is going to happen on their end, and then they can go straight for the core. Push the lanes out. Bot lanes pushed out already. You do it in the mid lane, and then you start to use the web weavers to attack the core directly. Nande. Going to be backing up here. Diamond Skin attempting to clear up what they can. They have to watch out for a hook. Rimmer comes around from the corner and finds a Wolf Joe. The hook lands on Lenara, able to grab her. She's been gorged. Now she has her jump available. Can they get out of here? One jump, two jump, trying to escape as he heals enough. It's not as Rimmer gets the auto attack. Rimmer goes in and he gets the flip over. Domination kicks in, resets the cooldown, and then the Shadow Charge finishes the job. None in the back line already deleted. And this is Tricked Esports getting their own name onto the board as they are going for the core. Only two heroes able to try defense. Diamond Skin with Tracer and Garrosh, but already we're seeing the Org obliterated here. Diablo just way too strong at this point, and the core is being attacked. It's dropping as Strict Esports claims victory on Tomb of the Spider Queen and takes the map of Diamond Skin. Trick Esports holds on, holds on, continues to keep their gems. I think they had 130 at one point in this match. Able to finally get a kill and go for their own turn in and start to open up the map. And when they did, they took out three forts, a keep as well on one turn in. That Golden Lake game and, of course, this portal type of play finally paying off for them.
Yeah, they really played well around the portals to get isolation kills at the beginning of the game, but they never really were able to flip the team fights in their favor, and they lost out on the objective. But once that they got the crucial kill against Tracer, they got the turn in and the momentum going for themselves. They never really let go. It was really well played by them there. But at the beginning, outside of those isolation kills, it looked a bit 